and welcome back to Sports Talk Live. I'm Brian Fiaco. And I'm Riley Wallace. Unfortunately, Taylor couldn't be here with us today, so you're stuck with just the two of us. We'll start off today talking about Westchester's hottest squad right now, the men's basketball team. They're on a four-game winning streak with victories in seven of their last eight games. They're coming off their two biggest wins of the season, pulling up upsets against Kutztown and Bloomsburg this past week. So let's break down the Kutztown game first. Coming in, Kutztown was in first place, having won 10 of their last 11 games. Westchester took control right out of the gate, though, and led most of the contest. They led by seven at the half and shot lights out in the second to go on to win 103-88 to in one of the highest scoring college games I've ever seen. Yeah, Riley, I have to agree. There were so many points scored. What do you think it was about this that made it such a high scoring affair? Well, the referees played a huge part as they called a total of 51 fouls in the game. Another thing was Westchester's tremendous shooting in the second half. They missed only seven shots and shot 73% from the field. Yeah, the rest played a huge part, and if you take a look at it, it was on average over one foul every minute. That's unheard of. And the refs were stopping the clock by putting points on the board. It's no reason why this was such a high-scoring affair. Now let's talk about the Bloomsburg game. We trailed 9-0 before scoring our first points, really struggling early. Still down by four at halftime. Neither team really took control in the second, and it really came down to who made the crucial plays in crunch time. Fortunately for us, it was Westchester, as they pulled it out 74-71. to so Brian, what was the difference in the second half that gave us the edge and got us the victory? Well Riley, for me in this one, it was us staying out of foul trouble. No one on the team had more than three fouls. That gave the starters ample playing time and they were really able to get into a rhythm. Another thing you want to take a look at was the three-point scoring. We outscored Bloomsburg 27-9 to and Bloomsburg shot 0 for 10 in the second half from behind the arc. That's just unheard of. That brings up a great point, Brian. I've noticed a few things over their recent winning streak they've been doing consistently well, including three-point shooting. They're not forcing the shots, they're shooting when they're open and shooting a higher percentage. Another thing is the team defense. When they're pressing, it's been a very effective press. And when they're not, their rotation on defense has been absolutely tremendous. The last thing I've noticed is the ball movement. On offense, the unselfishness this team has is absolutely remarkable. The, the togetherness they're showing at just the right point in the season is leading this team to success. Yeah, Ryan, who would have expected us to be in the position we are now? With four games left in the season, we're one game back of East Stroudsburg and Kutztown for the second place spot, and only two games back of Bloomsburg, who leads the division. Now, East Stroudsburg comes to Hollinger Fieldhouse on Saturday. It's going to be an unbelievable race to finish. Let's hope that Westchester can finish on top. Well, let's finish up talking about the men by introducing the Ram of the Week. The Ram of the Week is the player whose horns have outshined the rest, and in this week, it's no doubt that it's Lance McDowell. Big time players step up in big games, and that's exactly what Lance did, averaging 28 points and 10 rebounds in his past two games, shooting 54% from the field. You can't ask for anything more from this senior leader. On top of it all, Lance was recently named PSAC East Player of the Week for the second time this year. There is no doubt that without Lance, Westchester would not be in the position that they are currently in. Now let's shift our attention to the Lady Rams. As much as the men are finding their stride, the women's hot streak has fizzled as they are struggling to find some consistency in their game. Last week, they started off with a win against Kutztown, 66-53. Westchester's full court press continued to cause havoc as they caused 30 turnovers. Alex Lennon led the team, scoring 21 points and grabbing 9 rebounds, one short of a double-double. Moving to the Bloomsburg game, the Rams fell to the first place Huskies, 84-76. Westchester was unable to keep up behind the lines as Bloomsburg scored 36 points from three and made 22 of 24 free throws. With Westchester tied for second with Millersville, there's no room for error as they come down the home stretch. Before we finish up with Westchester basketball, Riley, do you know what time it is? Well, Brian, I believe it's time for STL's top plays of the week. Starting off our top plays today, Tiffany Johnson gets the inbound, throws a long pass to Carly Strickland for the N1. Our next play, Corey Blake blocks a shot and John Breen comes out of nowhere for another block and Harley Williamson cleans up at the end. At number three we have a rare one, Lance McDowell hits the free throw. This is the first time since 2005 that the Golden Rams have scored over 100 points. Our second top play, or should I say plays, consists of three nice assists by Allison Hostetter. The first, she dishes to Amberlene Ortman, who finishes with the layup. The second, 
Megan Kerrigan passes to Allison, who tips it to Alex Lennon, who finishes with another layup. And our third, Allison gets the steal and makes a no-look behind the back pass to Alex Lennon, who finishes. Some more great defense at the number one play. Jalil Mack comes in for the block, followed by John Breen with another block, and then Jalil Mack continues to go coast to coast for the easy layup. Well, that was another week of exciting plays on the basketball court, which brings us to our final segment, Outside the Horns. Today on Outside the Horns, our topic is the NBA. Who would have thought that in the middle of winter, the hottest team in Philadelphia would be not the Eagles, not the Flyers, but the 76ers? The Flyers are playing well as expected, but all the talk in Philly is about this young Sixers team. Some critics say their success is due to an easy schedule, but I'm here to tell you the Sixers are for real, with recent wins over the Bulls and Lakers. This young team has tremendous upside, and it should be a very exciting rest of the season. Creating even more buzz in the league is Jeremy Lin. Lin's sanity, as he's being referred to as, has went from playing in the D-League and sleeping on his brother's couch to an unsung hero for this New York Knicks team. On a five-game winning streak, Lin is making it easy to forget that New York has been playing in the absence of their superstar Carmelo Anthony. Riley, so I have to ask, are you Lin inspired by his recent success, or are you not buying it? Oh, I'm Lynn Spired, Brian, but it's hard to imagine a Harvard grad sleeping on his brother's couch. Anyway, it'll be interesting to see how this all works out once Carmelo Anthony returns to action. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week's segment of Sports Talk Live. We'll be here next week, same time, same place. Take it easy, Westchester.